car won't start. I'm so LA. Hey everyone, Miles J here. If you enjoy other people being stressed out, then this is definitely the video for you. You've come to the right place. Congratulations. Thank you so much for stopping by Miles J Productions. My name is Miles J, and this is my production. So today's story is a little bit of a sensitive one for me because it cost me a lot of money, and I made a lot of mistakes, and it was very embarrassing to have to go through. But um, time has passed now. So before we get into today's video, I'm just going to pop open a nice bottle of peach soju. Now I haven't eaten since this morning, so this probably isn't the best idea, but you know, fuck it. This shit is so good. It tastes like juicy juice. So this is the story of my car. <laughs> So I was planning on moving out from the previous town I lived in. I had lived there previously before when I was in middle school and middle school was like a very dark time for me and my parents got divorced there. So like it's just with that being said that that kind of just sets the uh, mood. I'm going to buy a car because I want to move out because of all this garbage. I go to a Honda dealer because that's right around the corner from where I was at and plus I know Hondas are really reliable cars. It also is unfortunate that they are one of the most broken into. But I didn't know at the time. I was just like, I just want something cheap because I, I only had so much money. Um, didn't really know, understand how getting a car worked. So I did like a little research um, and I asked my dad to come with me. He didn't help me. Like, at all. And now here we are. So I'm going around looking at all these cars, okay, and these, the car dealership, I know how shark-like these car dealers are, you know, selling you on deals, on things that you really don't need inside your car. I thought that I would be able to bring my dad and we'd be able to hash this out and I'd be able to get the car that I wanted and that I'd be able to look out for these things. The devil had other plans. Already in my mind, I'm thinking I definitely don't want something like a, new, a brand new car. I want something cheap, cheaper, you know, but something that is still going to get me where I need to go from point A to point B. A nice little ride, okay? A nice little ride. She doesn't have to be super pretty, but she definitely has to be clean and work well and be like somewhat refurbished. Like I didn't want something that was completely garbage because that would defeat the whole purpose of getting a car. She was definitely on the older side, but like I definitely could see myself driving it for a few more years. I settle on this gold tan Honda Accord. Um, she's got leather interior. It has a touch screen map on the inside. It was only 10,000. It was the cheapest one on the lot. Warning sign number one. And so I'm getting inside of her. We get a feel for her. I'm driving her around. I'm looking around while I'm test driving this vehicle and I look and I see there's an aux button and I'm like, oh, where's the aux cord? And he pulls out this random fucking cord and I'm like, girl, what's that? And he's like, oh, you can actually attach something to this. And I was like, oh, okay. The fucking cord was an attachment to the aux. There was a DVD player in the back trunk and it was actually an attachment to that. I found out too little too late and I just had to deal with it at some point and the only thing that worked was the radio. So I didn't even try putting a CD in the CD player. It said it was a six disc CD player. There was no CD player to be found. I tried putting a disc in there. The, someone had removed the six disc CD player. It was gone. That should have been the first fucking question I asked, first of all. Does this fucking aux player work? And number two, is there fucking CDs in the fucking CD player? Or, like, can I put them in there? Don't ever fucking assume when it comes to getting your fucking car. Um, he's like, are you sure you don't want the new Honda Accord? And I'm like, girl, I'm sure. Because my thing was, is that as soon as I got to Los Angeles, I just had a feeling that if I got into an accident, I would be so pissed. I was like, no, I'm fine, I'm good. Just give me Little Miss Golden Hoopty and um, we're good. So I look at all this paperwork that I don't understand. Um, I sign my life away and boom, I have this car with these deducted payments that are 
relatively seem easy in theory. And then boom, I'm moving to Los Angeles with all my stuff in the backseat of this car and I get here and um, get into an accident. Literally, upon arrival. Upon arrival! I was like, see, this is why I got the car. So at some point, I was driving, I had stopped at this red light, and then this big ass SUV smashed into my fucking bumper and caved it in, the bumper flew up, we were in the middle of the fucking street, and because I was so taken aback, my car flew a couple inches and hit the car in front of me. I'm so tired. Fast forward a couple months, I park my car um, in what I think is a good spot. Um, next day, I can't find my car. I'm like, huh, that's weird. I could have sworn I parked here before. Huh. So I'm looking around, looking around. So my car stays missing. You know, I stop looking for it for like, I don't know, a week. Then I get a letter in the mail from the tow company. Your car has been impounded for parking on the wrong side. Wait. Wait, what? When when did it get impounded? And I look at the date, and it's like a week ago. And I'm like, you guys are just not sending me a fucking package! When your car gets impounded, every day that it stays in that impound, you have to pay for that daily rate. And I had an ultimatum. I either paid my rent, or I pay for this car. I need somewhere to live. That car stayed there for not too long before I was able to gather the rest of my funds and throw it at them and get my car out. So finally get my car out, was able to drive it back, parked it in front of my place, and then the next day, tried to move my car because it was on the wrong side of the road. Street cleaning happens. Tried to put that key in the ignition, she wouldn't start up. And I was like, uh, it must be the key. Check my stick shift, checked and see if she was still in park. She was. So I look at my key and I'm like, okay, maybe it's the key. Turn it. The key's fine. The key's glued together. She's good. The car just wouldn't start up. It would just make a click. So now my fucking car isn't starting. Great. Cool. So I get a ticket that day. I call this tow company, tell them I need them to jumpstart my car. They jumpstart it. I was like, oh my God, thank God. I was able to drive it around for that day. Then I figured out my registration is expired. Great. So um, now I'm going to drive my car and get that registration. No. I also find out that my I need a smog check. And in order to get the smog check, I need to have my registration. But I could tell them that I needed to get the smog check to get my registration. So that was something that was happening. And in order to get my registration, I needed a smog check. And my car's not starting. Again. At this point, I am about ready to slip. Now I'm accumulating street tickets. Each ticket was $72. I need to pay for that. I also now need to go to the repair shop and pay for whatever the fuck is going on with my ignition. I also need to pay for registration and I also need to pay for a smog check. And I can't get my registration or the smog check without either of the two. I'm fucking pissed. I'm like, you know what? I'm calling my dad. I'm like, what do I do? And he's like, mm. Tough. Dad, I'm gonna get rid of the fucking car. And he's like, don't get rid of the car. And I'm like, why? It's literally costing me more money than my rent. And he's like, oh, I was out here struggling. That car was eating my fucking money up. I should just fucking live in my car for how much this bullshit is costing me right now. I was able to go and fix the ignition um, for a short period of time. I tried to set up the appointment for my registration and my smog check and then my car gets repossessed. I find out that I actually have payments due on my car and I was too busy paying for these tickets, this fucking smog check, this fucking registration, this fucking repairs that I couldn't even get to the actual car payment. They took the Honda and they towed it from here in Los Angeles all the way to Camarillo. Camarillo is an hour away from where I used to live. Now, I have to find some way to get over there without a fucking car. Luckily, I have a friend. His name is Krishna. 
He's very sweet. Hi, Krishna, if you're watching. He was nice enough to drive me all the way there so that way I could pay this bill and take out my car. I was able to start it, drive it all the way back home. As soon as I got it back home, tried to turn it on the next day, it didn't start again. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try and fix it, but if, it, if they take it again, that's it. It's gone, it's out of my hands. So I tried and it didn't work. They just took it back. My car got repossessed, officially. I have to say the one thing I learned from this whole entire experience is don't get an old car. <laughs> don't buy an old car, just buy a new one because old cars will shit out on you and you'll have to deal with situations like that. Like, can y'all tell I'm still mad and stressed about it? Just... Buying a car, is, it feels like you're just willingly buying into a scam. Like, you have to be able to negotiate your fucking pants off. These car companies and these dealerships will take everything from you. They will just take everything from you. And for what? For what? Polluting the fucking environment? and killing us all. So in conclusion, may you learn from my mistakes. Cheers. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you would like to see more drunk story times from me, make sure to comment down below, like this video, and if you're into what I do here, baby, subscribe because I come through with the content every Tuesday and Thursday. That is if the stars have aligned right. So thank you guys all so much for watching. And until next time, it's been me, Miles J. And I'll talk to you guys all later. 